Hey, all right, look at me crossing over here. Hey, Billy, I've been listening to uh, the podcast since I was 16. I'm 22 now and I've enjoyed every episode, especially during quarantine. I'm a violinist, sculptor, and a trans man. Look at you. Uh, definition in the next paragraph. Thank you. And have been wanting to write in for a while. After hearing you read the letter a fan sent in about his trans friends attending his wedding, I thought now would be the time. Oh, beautiful. All right, let me do the recap. So this guy was um, getting married, and not one but two of his friends that he was going to have be groomsmen either had transitioned or were in the process of transitioning. And he was like, am I an asshole if I don't want him to wear a dress? Okay, that was the question. So me knowing nothing about the subject, that didn't stop me from answering it. That's in, the, I believe, the previous or two episodes ago. Um, all right, so now we're going to actually hear from somebody uh, living the life here. First off, I do want to clar clarify that by trans man, I mean I transitioned from female to male. Oh, fuck, okay. I didn't get that. <laughs> I thought trans man meant you went the other way. Okay. In, in, in instrument rating, that would be reverse sensing uh, on a VOR uh, for all you pilots out there. In short, I'm a he. In your response to the fan that wrote in, you said that transitioning seems like a massive emotional process, and you were exactly right. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Not bad for a thith white male. Uh, when I describe the experience, which I do openly, to create a dialogue for people who are generally curious, I often say that transitioning is not an option, but more so the only option for, for most people like me. Let me ask you this. Before you totally committed, was there any doubt? Like, okay, I, I hope, because, I mean, I hope I'm doing the right, I hope I'm getting this right. Because I can't tell you how many times I've misread my feelings. I mean, it, but the, the stakes were not that high. That's like fucking, you're going all in with the chips, so to speak. Uh, anyway, he goes, imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, ha and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having 24-7 of having access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Let me read this again. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are expected to wear heels. All right, now, wait a minute. I thought you transitioned from a woman to a man. I mean, I, mean, I transitioned from female to male. Okay. It says, imagine you wake Oh, maybe she's, uh, he's putting me in this? I don't know. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, have, and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having 24-7 access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Nobody chooses to go through all of that trouble of being alienated from friends and family members on a whim. Well, there you go. You just answered my question. For me, if I wanted to have a future post high school, I had to make this step and I have avoided a lot of further mental dissonance, dissonance thanks to the scientists and surgeons who advocated for trans medicine. And yes, I will always trust the opinions of a scientist over a politician. Fair enough. As the wedding scenario goes, I can guarantee his trans grooms were just as conflicted as him. I also came out right before a relative's wedding and was given an ultimatum of you either lie about your identity if you want to remain a part of this family or you won't be welcomed back into our lives. That is just fucking, can you imagine your family saying that to you? I ended up playing violin at their ceremony for free and never getting invited to another family reunion. Wow. That is really fucking sad. I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jesus, in the near future, that doesn't happen. How do you disown a fucking, your own kid? I, I don't get that. I don't get that. I mean, I draw the line of, you know, hearing my kid leave and then getting charged with the, at night and covering for a murder. <laughs> I mean, there are lines. Um, yeah, you do some dateline shit, you know. I mean, you're kind of out on your own. But I'd still visit you when you went to jail, and I would be like, where did I fuck up that made you do something like that? Um, anyway, personally, if I were asked to be a bridesmaid before coming out as a guy, I would, I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditional, traditionally female role. I'm betting this guy's trans grooms 
people felt similar. I have to fucking do the math on that. I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditionally female role. Uh, I don't know what that means. I'm betting this guy's trans groom people felt the sim- similar. I hope you guys understood what that meant. I didn't get that one sentence. Okay, and here's where the rant opens up. All right, here we go. Taking the gloves off there. All right, a lot of trans people are are, are really pissed by the false and performative allyship the far left has dumped on us with little work to back their claims up. Yeah, it's a fucking show. That's what I think so much of that liberal social justice fucking horseshit is. It's just for you to put on a little performance on your social media page. And people can be like, oh, wow, you're an ally. Here's your little rainbow fucking emoji. And then you can just go back to living your life and you're not getting your hands dirty. Um, it's like those white people that marched with Black Lives Matter as they were live Instagramming themselves. Like, look at me. I have a bandana on. I'm a fucking revolutionary. And then after that, they just went back to their life. <laughs> Got CrossFit in the morning. Um, we are identifying more as independents because we've experienced hate from the right and tokenism from the left. Oh, yeah, you get used. I mean, which is worse? At least, I mean, I know the hate, if it escalates to violence, is bad. But at least if somebody's just straight up says how they feel about you as opposed to just using you. Um, anyway, I think a lot of your jokes about trans people are actually more about performative cis people. I don't know what cis means, who are using trans issues for votes because they know we are a very vulnerable group. Uh, Well, they kind of do that with everybody. I guess that's the only positive way. Politicians always do that. They're always fucking looking for some fucking angle (coughs) for themselves. Anyway, but not all. They're not all bad. There's got to be some good ones in there. Trans people just want to live a normal life, start a family, and not be claimed as a political pawn. I was at my lowest depression before I started hormones and got my chest masculinization procedure. What chest did you go with? Are they good enough that you can pick one out? Because personally speaking, uh, you know, I would I would go fucking Matthew McConaughey. Um, but here's the thing. You know what's funny is if they actually get it down someday where you could do that, all of these fucking people who are like anti-trans and all of that shit, if they find out that you can actually get a Matthew McConaughey chest and they're looking at their fucking man tits, they might do it. You know, I got the McConaughey, you know, you know, right before they fucking put the fucking gas on your face, you have headphones. And the last thing you hear is Matthew McConaughey going, all right, all right, all right. (laughs) And you wake up with a chiseled, tan chest. Um, That'd be fucking hilarious if I did that as a redhead and my chest didn't match the whiteness of my head. Then I have to go reverse Michael Jackson, you know, do a reverse bleaching. Um, Anyway, let's not make this about you, Bill. Anyway, he says, uh, says, uh, I haven't left the house in weeks. I haven't left the house in weeks and nearly dropped out of school. Since transitioning, I'm happy, back on stage, volunteering, writing music. That's great. Teaching violin students, running my small business. There you go. Don't work for somebody else. And I have, have met someone special. Ah, look at you. I know I'm from an outside perspective being trans. I know from an outside perspective being trans seems crazy. If you knew the thunder and lightning between my fucking ears, I don't think anybody's crazy. I think it's fucking crazy to uh, go through life and not think that you're kind of fucking nuts yourself. You know, walking around thinking you have it all figured out. I think that that's fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you know, like shit freaks me out without a doubt. I'm not saying this shit, but I will tell you when, when Bruce became Caitlin, there was definitely, you know, a what the fuck moment. Now I'm used to it. But what was weird about that, was if you were like me, you weren't for some reason allowed to have that what the fuck moment, um, which is one of those things that the left is like psychotic with. It's like you you, you got you got to let everybody kind of go through their emotions as long as they're not hurting anybody. They're pr- you're processing it. That's all right. 
So anyway, this person says, I felt the same way until I realized I would always be ang be an angry, sad person if I had stayed in the closet. I started listening to your podcast the same month I came out back in 2017 and have not been offended by the jokes about trans people. Contrary to what the far left or right wants you to think, trans folk have a pretty thick skin and we're no strangers to having having to advocate for our rights. I've been doing a lot of work on undoing the anger I built up over my teenage years and listening to your show has given me laughs when I needed them the most. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Wasn't that great? Look at me, huh? I'm going to make that whole fucking thing about me. You know, the appeal of me is just really amazing. And you guys, I just want to say, as a podcast justice warrior... Um, all right, so if anybody is listening to this and your kid is gay and they came out and you disowned them, can you, can you not do that to them? That's such a fucking horrible, horrible thing to do to somebody. Um, it really is. It really is. It's like, you know... Just try to be, uh, you know, just fucking work your way through it. You know what I mean? It's a, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. That happens to me with one of my kids. I mean, it's you. Just be who the fuck you are, and don't be a fucking asshole to other people. That's all I ask. Can you just do that? Great. All right. So anyways, I'm glad you're here to taper this part. Uh, so I was, I was over here, and, and Mia showed me the cover of what magazine was that? Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair. Are we talking about Caitlyn Jenner? Yeah. The Kardashians. You just blew it. I was going to oh. fucking build the whole thing up, and then because I was looking oh, at it going, yeah, yeah, yeah. how do I know? <laughs> I'm like, how do I know that chick? Is that somebody we know? You're like, she's, I know that she, woman. And I'm thinking, <laughs> she's not good enough. She's not good looking enough to be on the cover. <laughs> Is she a publicist? Is she some famous publicist? And then it was me, Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn with a C. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to tell you, man, that is the Congratulations, most. Congratulations, Caitlyn Cakes. <laughs> I know, I got to tell you, that is the most. That's the most hardcore thing I've ever seen played out in like uh, all that Marilyn Manson shit and Alice Cooper and Ozzy biting the head off a bat. Nothing compares to the what the fuck factor. And I'm not saying, I'm not, you know. You're comparing, like, like shock, the rock, shock. shock rock tactics to someone becoming transgendered. I really don't somebody think Somebody that you way. knew, somebody that you I'm knew. Not can you let me, can you let me. Continue with your ignorant thoughts? Sure. No. That's, you know, you shouldn't say that. This is the first time I ever experienced this. I had to be able to fucking say what I'm thinking. You see his own, his own daughters are going like, so wait a minute. <laughs> You're going to be bothering my, <laughs> my toenail polish? They got to get their head around it. I'm yeah. allowed to get my head around it. I, God true. bless them. That's okay, true. that's what he wanted to do. She. Well, he did it. Now he's a sh now he's a she, is he? But he still yes. has his dick, right? Bill. Does he? She wants to be called she. She wants to be called Caitlin. Okay, I'm cool so with that. Call, call her she. I'm all right with that. She has not had surgery. No, she has not. I think that's something she might she, do in the future. Okay, so she has a penis and she's, she's still a she at this point. Correct. So not, the reality is, is you don't have to do any of that. You can just say, I want to be called she, and people should just respect it. Pretty much, because it's a whole idea about gender not necessarily being rooted in physicality or sexuality. It being more of a state of mind. So this is like some... Which is a big debate, of course. But, so this is like some Ornette Coleman shit. Who's that? With your body. Ornette Coleman. He was one of those guys who played so free with jazz, there was really no one. And even like Charlie Parker would walk off the bandstand going, I don't know what the fuck these guys are playing. <laughs> okay. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I think mm -hmm. this is a groundbreaking thing. Yep. That he's the first, and he will be like, he's like the, uh, the I don't first know. First what, though? Well, I'm not going to wade into that fucking sinkhole. God knows I'll say the wrong fucking thing. There was, the, a trans, the first... there was a transgendered person on the cover of Time magazine last year, which was actually the first. No, no, but I mean her as far as... Ern Cox from Orange is the New Black. What was her name before that? Larry? I don't know, and it doesn't fucking matter. I think you should you should keep your... Like, like I, I, would, I, I would be... I go from Bill, I would be Beth. Would you? Beth Burke. Oh, wait, can we talk about that? <laughs> Let's talk about if you decided to transition. Would you really go by Beth? No, I think, I, I think I'd be Janet, and I would be such a cunt. It would, 
so pretty much the same, right? Yeah. But you know me now as a male, I'm awarded for being an asshole. You know that that ridiculous feminist theory that if a woman does it, she's a cunt. But if a guy does it, they're like, oh, you want to be president? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking morons. Um, I feel like men are definitely the called microphone. assholes when they're assholes, but I don't think uh, they're morons for saying that. Men get to... Get to do what? They get to act, especially in business, in a more, um, let's say, cutthroat... Yeah. Like a Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban's a fucking dick, but Mark Cuban is also brilliant and a really successful businessman. But I feel like more often than not, he gets called brilliant and amazing. No, he doesn't. Even he gets called a jackass all the he time. Does? All the time. And he I runs people... out on the court and does all that stuff. <laughs> Get he... off the court, you jackass. I thought totally. people were always saying, like, you know, Mark Cuban is a, you know, business genius and... You know, I, no, I he know. is. But he is. He's undeniably is. But he does. He doesn't get good reviews. That guy gets no, trashed all the time. No. You know what it is? Is you guys have bad experiences with men while you're dating, and they get to be dicks and bang you and then leave, and you you never quite are able to wash that off. Um, so I think that you guys then look at us in a certain way. I'm able to separate my experiences from dating dicks to dealing with dicks in day to day life. I am not so simple minded and like one dimensional that it's oh, like you're not petty. oh my god you're not petty a guy dumped me one time and right. now they're all dicks. Like are you fucking kidding me? But there was a period in your life you can't tell me that you didn't get a little petty. I did. I actually never did. I did all those guys that dumped me. <laughs> no, I had it. Uh, yeah, I didn't have. I, yeah, I didn't necessarily have the greatest right, track record with men, but I didn't write you all off because listen. of that. I still was looking for love. Listen, what? all right. So what I'm saying is, as far as like the most hardcore fucking thing I've ever seen, as far as just spinning your head around like holy shit, is the fact that Bruce Jenner, unlike that other woman who I don't even know what, who the fuck that is who's on Time Magazine, is that this guy, you got to say my whole life, I've known this guy from like second grade on. Yeah. He won the decathlon. He was on the Wheaties box. Mm -hmm. He was on chips. He got a nose job <laughs> and then he disappeared and then he came back on the Kardashians and he was walking around in the background. And I remember Lawhead had this great fucking bit. About, oh, yeah, uh, yeah did, just actually. being like, what the, why are you sitting there getting bitched at? You got a fucking gold medal for the decathlon. They got you walking around in the ba background, you know, like, you know, I used to be walking around with that medal around your neck or something, right? <clears throat> to then, I remember when, when TMZ was chasing around saying that he was having a sex, sex change. I was like, oh my God, leave the guy alone. You know, he doesn't like his face, you know, and I, uh, I don't know. He's, he's, doing whatever the fuck he's doing, and then it turned out they were right. And now when he comes out, call me Caitlin. I mean, this is the thing, like, because what I don't, what I don't, is that there's going to be a lot of people that get in trouble as they're trying to fucking process this for the first time. This is their first time experience. And I think you want to allow people to have that, that first dumb thing that comes out of their mouth, not understanding and being like, what, but everybody's going to jump on them. You and know some what? Are, some will lose their, good point. Someone will lose their career. To sit there no, and watch this guy, point. like you wanted to be this guy. You uh -huh. wanted to be Bruce Jenner. I wanted my hair parted down the middle and feathered <laughs> to the side. I wanted to be a motorcycle cop. I wanted to do all of that shit. And then all, all of a sudden, I remember reading articles about him, like his fucking life. You know, he's in between, you know, girlfriends or whatever. And uh, they went to his house and he had some Porsche Targa. I still remember this in sports. So he had a Porsche Targa in the garage. That he walked by and he ran his fingers along. He had a little bit of dust on it. I'm like, this guy, he sold the shit that he just has a leftover Porsche. I mean, this dude was like a guy's guy mm -hmm. to then, boom, go the other, that 180 the other, other fucking way. Yeah, I think people should be yeah. definitely allowed to be honest with it. I just feel like the cruelty is, is what's unnecessary. No, 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 not cruelty. But you ought to be able to say, like, Bruce, what the fuck? Sorry, Caitlin, what the fuck? <laughs> Wow. Wait a minute. Like, were, can I sit down for a second? They were talking um, to one of his sons from his other marriages, like Brandon or something. And he's, <laughs> she lifted up her dress to show uh, his son her new boobs. No! And, he, and he goes, whoa, I'm still your son. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, whoa, wait, g just just give me a second. And then another one of his sons. No, but he would never, when he was no, of show course, his balls. Of course. Of course. It's where you came from, son. Of course. No, of course. It was definitely, uh, that would be very uh, uh, weird. No, but that's always been my theory. 
But and the girls, other... girls who get fake boobs will show them to you like they got their nails done because it's an insecurity thing. So you gotta be like, see. Check I out have, the girls. I have two friends with amazing boob jobs. I never would have known. They're so they're so good. You gotta you gotta pay for it. You know what I'm saying? You can't go out in there and get discount plastic. They surgery. don't go to Denny's when you get the boob job. Like right? whatever the facial reconstruction that Caitlyn has had is fucking amazing. Now of course she still is a handsome woman, but like it really it looks good and those those those. Tits, I don't know what you're talking about. What fabulous. do you just mean she's still a handsome woman? Did you mean that she started off as a handsome guy? No, there are some women that are, like, handsome. This whole thing that I'm saying like right now, Catherine Nina, Hepburn. listen to me. This whole thing that I just said, what? Is, you mean like that that's, that's the handsome guy or, like, the woman right now? You know what? This, this, is, this whole fucking scenario is why I never watched Lost. What? This is why I never watched Lost. How did you go? Because they were come like, is this a dream state? Is there a fucking monster down here? What's going on? And then now you're, you're jumping back and forth on either side. It's like he's playing tennis against himself right now. It's kind of like your ADD <laughs> brain. Actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah it's kind of like bringing around an insult bill. Look, I'm on vacation. I'm, I'm trying to have a good time. I'm not insulting you, <laughs> Um. Uh, but you know what else? Um, uh, one of his kids, also, her kids, see? Even I'm slipping with the pronoun. Oh, you homophobe, transgendered hater. <laughs> What's your career? We need to end it. Uh, <laughs> my career is lying around with you in France. Suck it. Uh... Well, that's that dude on Twitter <laughs> who gave me shit. <laughs> Anybody who starts a tweet with the word maybe, I, I'm done with. Yeah. Uh, maybe don't blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, what a cunt. Oh, no, I was saying one of Caitlin's do uh, sons said, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I think that, or something like that, Caitlin will be a better parent than Bruce was. Something Ooh. like that. No, I mean, he's been, I mean, she's been pretty That's open funny. about it. And then if Caitlin starts crying, be like, Caitlin, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking, <laughs> I was talking to Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> no, by, uh, by all accounts, especially his, his first set of kids, I didn't he like wasn't him there. Either. They were, he, Bruce wasn't there for them. Because he was a fucking man. And now that, now that, uh, now that Bruce has become Caitlin, you think hey, that hey, Bruce, the femininity will Bruce be better? won the gold medal. Caitlin still has to prove herself. She hasn't won shit yet. <laughs> <laughs> She's won all of our hearts. Um, all right. Well, no. But you know something else? Then there's also the then falling all over yourself. There's, there's the ignorant being mean about it. And then also the going the other way where you fall all over yourself. And if Caitlin's being a cunt, you can't call her a cunt because <laughs> she used to be Bruce, which is bullshit. Well, I guess Bruce was an asshole because Bruce really wanted to be Caitlyn and was struggling and was taking it out on other people and was literally running away. I think That's Caitlyn I is going to be the biggest gossipy. She's going to go to brunch and just talk shit about everybody in her immediate circle. I'm pretty excited to see how this unfolds, actually. It's it's pretty major. Are you going to watch the her show? No, I never watched the Kardashians. Oh, that's true. I hate those fucking shows. Yeah, that makes sense. And to be honest with you, I, I would have to, I'll, I'll just sort of walk by the TV and occasionally glance over. I need to ease my way into the fact. <laughs> to, you uh, are. You're going to watch it over my shoulder. And I, have the, and, I, and I have the fucking right to do that. Yes, you do. Yeah. When you make that big of a fucking change. Jesus Christ, I shaved my head. People are like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to give people, you got to have the, you got to be courteous. And let people, like, fucking, all right, let me, uh, okay, okay. You should have, like, five-minute visits, and then they, they increase to ten, and you just got to gradually, like, I mean, you literally, it's like you killed off the other person. You know what I mean? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like, where are they? Yep. Gone. Yeah, so then, it, and then it's weird. It's like, well, I, I technically sh should be liking you, right? But you're not the other person, but you're still you. Mm-hmm. Do you think he did something like he sold his soul to the devil and he's like trying to beat the devil at his own game? And now just becoming like a woman at the end of his life so he no. could save his soul and the devil's like, oh, where, where did Bruce go? And he's, like, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like Angel Hot. Are you talking about that movie with Lisa Bonet? Yeah, and Mickey Rook. He's fucking great. <laughs> Louis Cipher. Um, anyways, who knows? <laughs> 
I don't fucking know. <laughs> Bill Burr tackled <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> no, I didn't. I fucking I'm getting my head around it. As I, I should allow be I allowed mean. to do. All right. Can we find it? There we go. All right. This one's titled "Oh Jesus." Um, I am a 23 year old man from Paducah, Kentucky. Now, why would you tell me that? I didn't want to read that. There's probably 18 people in your your town, right? Needless to say, there isn't much to do. About five months ago, I met a girl who was two years younger than me and moved into town from East Kungamunga. Uh, we hit it off almost instantly. It was great. You know what? I'm going to have somebody bleep out this city. All right? I got to have bleep out the city and the state. He goes, we hit it off almost instantly. It was great. She is beautiful, educated, and has a great ass. Sorry. A little Al Pacino for you. Uh, we took things slow, and I found that to be something unique in today's time. Most girls give it up within a day or two, but she wanted to take things slow, and I appreciated that. I found myself falling head over heels for this girl. I hadn't been with anyone in over two years, and I felt that it, if she was... Wait, and I felt as if she was a sign that maybe there was a bit of hope in this world to be happy. And she communicated with me that she felt the same way. Okay, so about two weeks ago, we went out to a bar and we had some drinks, played some pool and had a great time and ended up getting a little frisky with each other. I drove her home totally expecting that tonight would be the night I was going to bang this beautiful woman. When we reached her driveway, we started making out in the car and... Asked if she wanted to come in. She got real quiet and said under her breath, yes, but. And, of course, I said, but what? And that's when she told me she is a transsexual. I literally yelled. I was so shocked by what I heard, I could hardly keep myself together. And I told her, him, whatever, that I wasn't going to go upstairs with her and I would call her tomorrow. And she got out of the car crying and said, I was born this way, like some Lady Gaga shit. Wait a minute, trans, what is, what is, what is transsexual? Like a hermaphrodite? Wait a second. Ah, oh, Jesus, Bill, you're, t you're too fucking dumb. Why do you guys, why do you guys write me? Is this, is this the fun, is this the fun part of it? Just finding out how fucking dumb I am? Transsexual. This is hilarious. Now I have this on my search en engine. Transsexual. And Nia will use my computer and look up like transcontinental and transsexual is going to come up. Bill, is there something we need to talk about? Um, transsexual. Here we go. A person who's undergone a sex change operation. A person whose sexual identification is entirely with the opposite sex. All right, well, that just made me even more confused. So if you had an operation, how were you born this way? Or she's, or the person saying, I just identified with being a female. Oh, I see, okay, so they had a, so the dude had a sex change operation. Okay. He goes, I haven't spoke to her since it's S-I-N-C-E, -E, not S-E-N-C-S-E. -S -E. um, that night, besides a few text messages. She's going on about how much she loves me and she is sorry she didn't tell me sooner. It's even gone as far as me having to turn off my phone because she won't stop calling. I've never been pursued like this before. What do I do? Part of me actually feels bad, but I can't see myself banging an ass every night while my sweaty balls slap against her sweaty balls. Now, wait a minute. I thought the person had the operation. Don't they remove that? You know, I don't fucking know. Regardless of how gay this may sound, I still think she's incredibly hot. I knew it was too good to be true. Should I tell her that I'm just not interested anymore and completely cut her off, or should I be her friend? Or should I go bang her ass? It's weird. The thought of banging her ass excites me, but the thought of her junk swinging around makes me want to throw up just thinking about it. 
Thanks, Bill, and come do a show in such and such state sometime, you fuck. Um, what should you do? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. What's funny is you're literally just like you're mentally where she is sexually. You know? I don't know. It, like you got to you got to it's like you're standing on the state line and you got a foot in either state. Just like her. You know? So I think your your emotions are normal. And I hate when fucking people get offended by this shit. And they go, that, that fuck are you, you know, they get all offended like that dude is now a woman. It's like, no, that is a dude that fucking uh, is a different kind of dude now. <laughs> you know, it's that's not a woman. It's still a dude. It's just a different kind of dude. You know what it's like? You ever see when somebody does uh, buys an old car and they take all the chrome off it? They want that nice clean look. Yeah, that's what they do to their 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 crotch. But, you know, that's a dude that took the chrome off. You know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Other than. Uh, I, I don't I don't know do do, do like th that fucking I don't, I don't know do 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 whatever the fuck you want to do is what I I would say let me go back and read what you said should I tell him I'm not interested anymore please cut her off all right part of me actually feels bad because I can see myself because I can't see myself banging an ass every night while my sweaty balls slap against her sweaty balls. Well, if it makes you feel better, I don't think the balls are there anymore. Although, they might have kept them like a hood ornament. I have no idea. Ah, oh, Jesus. I really am a moron. Uh, regard regardless of how gay this may sound, I still think she's incredibly hot. You know, why don't you just split the difference and get a blowjob? I, I don't know what to tell you. That's so funny. I knew it was too good to be true, this poor bastard. Um, I, I I would say this. I'd say you'd want to sit on that decision. Don't be like the Baltimore Colts in the 1983 draft. Did you guys just watch that 30 for 30 where they immediately walked up two seconds in and they selected John Elway? You know, rather than fucking waiting the full two minutes or whatever to see if anybody gave him an offer. And then they ended up with nothing. I, I, I would, I'd sit on this one for a minute. Um, and I think that this person's actually pursuing you the way that they are because they're in a desperate situation, which is, uh, the whole thing is, in reality, the whole thing is unfortunate. You know, people should be able to be who they are. You should be able to like who you like, and that person should be able to, from day one, say that they're transsexual without getting judged. The reason why they didn't say it was because they were worried about this fucking moment here. Which, once again, is another sad, depressing thing about humanity. Um, I would say follow your heart, sir. You know? And not your balls. If you really want to find love. There you go. Balls in your court. No pun intended. All right. Advice for a young lady. Hey, Billington. Um, very, very original ones this, this, this week. People coming up with different ways to butcher my name. I'm, I'm enjoying this. I am in need of some advice for a young lady. I, and I love that some women are actually piping in, despite the fact how much I talk about hockey on this podcast. What are you saying? Women don't like hockey? Yes, this is what I'm saying. Um, I'm an 18-year-old high school senior entering my freshman year of college. I got into my dream school with a scholarship. Ah, do you know how bad I wish that I did that? I wish I studied in high school. Anyways, and I'm moving out of my shithole town, and everything finally, finally seems to be making up for all the shit that I went through in high school. One of my really good friends is going to the same university as I am, 
and were renting an apartment together. However, my friend is an 18-year-old straight guy, and I am a straight girl. Uh Uh-oh. The gender thing could add a whole other level of difficulty on top of adjusting to living with a new person in a new city. Uh, away from everything I grew up around. We've been friends practically since we were in diapers. We can talk, jam out to 70s rock, and watch the Chappelle show for hours, and we've never had issues with weirdness before. But I do understand that college introduces a lot of firsts, and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous that a few too many... Oh, having a few too many drinks during a welcome weekend could lead to some inappropriateness Weirder things, weirder things have happened. Um, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize our nearly two decade long friendship. So this kind of sounds like you're a little attracted to this guy. If you're this worried that something's going to happen, or maybe you are, you're 18, you're going from your parents' house to all of a sudden living with a guy. Maybe that's what it is. I'm going to guess that that's what it is. So anyway, so my question: What tips do you have to stop anyone from stepping over the line? with a male-slash-female roommate. Also, in general, what tips do you have for living with a roommate? Nia's opinion on this would be epic. Thanks, and fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that was Nia's great fuck you last week. Um, you know what? Maybe this Wednesday uh, we'll do another Nia log, and I'll read this one. But right now I'll just give you my own ignorant um, thought on it. Oh, wait, wait. By the way, there's, there's a PS to this, everybody. There's an epilogue. Just like the streets of San Francisco. P.S. Might I add that we've both been in various relationships while friends. He often asks me for girl advice and I ask him for guy advice. He currently has a girlfriend who I really like and am friends with, but they are breaking up in June when she leaves to study abroad. I am currently single. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to bang within fucking eight minutes. Within eight minutes of your, of your, your college career. Um. All right, so basically what you want to do, you're not asking me should you or should you not move in with this guy. You're going to move in with this guy. So uh, what you're really saying is basically how do I not fuck this guy? Well, I can only do it from the male perspective, which is what I would do is every morning before I ever even walked out into the living room was I would rub one out. (laughs) <laughs> oh, God. to try to get that fucking, you know, urge out of me. I think what you need to do is sit down and talk with the guy and just say, listen, we have a great friendship, but I don't want to ruin this. I know we're moving in together and everything, but, um, you know, obviously we're going to be in close quarters. You know, sharing a bathroom and blah, 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 blah. You you know what you have to do? You have to lay down the law. If that's what you really want to do. But if you actually like this guy, like I think you might, um, if you actually like him, like him, and think you could actually, did I just say that? If you like, li- I mean, like, like him, like him, like him. Do you know what I mean? Do you? Oh, my God, you guys. This could be the one. Um, if you actually like this dude like that, then you should not move in with him. You should be in a separate apartment. And, uh, that way, if you start dating him, you don't immediately start by living with one another. You know? Now I get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this out by seventy. I want to figure. Can I can I tell you what I, I'm dying to talk to you about? Okay. One of the things that happens the most on the internet is Bill Burr interviews gone wrong. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> so, is like. What do I go to you Google yourself? Oh no no it's like I, you I, you have an unawareness about you that <clears throat> that you don't realize. That's how such much a great way talk. of saying you're kind of glib. No, you're you not glib. You this childlike... You're not glib, but, like, the two interviews are H3H3 and Theo Vaughn, where everyone's like, 
Did you see that interview? And by the way, knowing you, I don't see anything wrong with the interview. I had a great time with the Theo Vaughn thing. I don't know what the fuck happened with that. I don't know I either. I left that. I, we had a good time. I showed him my truck. We had a great fucking time. I thought you guys had a great time. I thought it was a great interview. I think it is, I, I knowing both of you, you were not not you, and he was not not him. Yeah, it's and that's just, the thing. I'll do his podcast again. And the, the thing about it is, is we, I, I, I understand his vibe more. Yeah. So it's just his like His vibe anything. is tough to gel with, like... If you're completely in the dark of what you're doing, you, it, it takes you a second to like, to yeah. like double dutch He's into it. He's one of it. my favorite comics. Dude, he is. Yeah, I don't so got it. Fucking not, so funny. like, people like to take a little fucking thing and then gas it up and make it something else, and then it becomes like you know that's all they're doing. That's like, all. What, yeah. What's funny is the average douchebag on these fucking social media is no different than these giant corporate news agencies where they're just they're just taking shit out of context. To cause you to cause something that didn't even happen, so you'll stop and watch it, so they can make money off of views. Yeah. And and people on the internet do the exact same thing. They know exactly where to cut it, where to begin it, and where to end it to make it to take it from a, a level two yeah. up to fucking twelve. I watched you and Theo's whole interview. Didn't find anything wrong with it, including what what people will say is how it ended, which is. You going, I have to go. I have to leave now. Yeah, my, I'm done. Kid, my kid was yeah. getting up. It had yeah. nothing to do with him. And, and, but when they, and then I watched the, uh, uh, you, you got to see this interview with Bill and Theo, and they chop it up to make it look like you don't like him, you don't get him. And do they do that with Rogan where they'll, they'll do like his reaction, that guy, right, and they can they totally make a completely different interview that didn't even happen? Oh, yeah. Don't, you don't have to tell me about that. I'm yeah, fucking so, with all my interviews. Yeah, so why, why would you watch that shit? I don't, I don't watch, I watch it. I watch it, but I don't know, you, but that doesn't... You know, fuck you, Bert. <laughs> They're going to cut this up now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's... Like someone will say something. Did you see that with Bill? And I go, Yeah, I did. And it's but just Bill. It's not. It's Bill and it's Theo. Like, how do you not see past just two dudes? Does your wife watch any of these games with you? Does she? No, she has the female complex, multitasking <laughs> brain. That's why they can't be happy. They they just they just always they're like, what is that lizard that can look at two things at once? That's what they're like. So they got the shoes they want, and then they see some other woman walking in going, oh, look at this skinny bitch over here. Women are so overrated, right? We, we went from... Wait, wait, what? We wait, went... Wait, wait, what? We what? went... Wait, we went, what? We went from not listening to them to now it's just, it's just, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Like that believe women. It's like all of them. Oh, God. You know what makes women happy? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes them happy. And that is why they have slowly taken over the NFL, because it annoys them that, that we can just sit there with, like, a pizza and a drink. Like, eh, that's not holding. And just, just be like, and enjoy ourselves. I saw a woman a couple months back, professional soccer player, right? She goes on to ESPN or one of these sports channels, going like, I don't understand. How come female athletes don't make as much as male professional athletes? Right? And all of these men had to sit there and act like they didn't know what the answer was. <laughs> they had to sit there like dumbfounded, like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, why is that? Uh, that is a conundrum. I have, I have no idea. Literally, I'm sitting at home screaming at the TV because you don't sell any fucking tickets! And they say, being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. difficult job Most on difficult. the... Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase, changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people... There's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil, the, the fucking, you know, they there drill will be blood. oil. What is it? There will be blood. With Not the... there will be blood. The uh, out in the ocean, they were drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, was Deepwater there. Horizon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. <laughs> They're on fire. They got to jump into water that's on fire. <laughs> Salty water into their wounds. You got to swim out of that oil and fire. And then tread water, praying to God that the Coast Guard is going to get there before the sharks do. 
Now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just, he wouldn't eat his peas. Yeah, and just the level of reward that is, you know, as annoying as a kid is, like they smile at you and it's over. It's over. So, I mean, you, you don't get that, you know, working on an oil rig when your buddy's greasy face lights up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It really is all worth it. I don't know. I have this. That's, that's all my ink. I have this uh, mic on, so. Yeah, that's all right. Be a gentleman and help me off with my question. <laughs> hey. hey, Cody, can you believe that marriage didn't work out? <laughs> I can't believe your relationships don't work out. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Feminism doesn't bug me, you know? It doesn't bother me. I'm not afraid of it or anything like that, you know? For the simple fact that I know it's gonna fail, you know? And I, I take comfort in that. I do. I'm not rooting for it because I know it doesn't like me. Um, yeah. Do you know why, you know why I think it's not gonna survive? Why it's not going to be successful anyways? Because they still need men's help to make it happen. I don't understand it. I don't understand why women just can't work with each other and make this shit happen. They keep coming to us like, you more men need to care about this issue. Where are the men to stand up and say something? Like, why do I have to fucking say something? This is your problem. Why are you always dragging us into this shit? I, I, you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not, like, compatible with them. You know what I mean? You ever just feel that? Like, women have, like, too much energy for me. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day. They're like, oh, my God, let's go fill it up with shit. No, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your t-shirts? This is the worst one. Ever get this one? You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside, you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that, right? You gotta keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you're thinking. Now nah, you're thinking. Then we can sit around and listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. Like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus! I thought it was pesto! Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? Because every time we fight, as I'm driving home, I get a text from you that says, you know I love you, right? I'm like, oh yeah, I love you that, too. That isn't me. <laughs> I've, never, I've never said, you know I... Are you, you fucking know, serious? Well, my memory isn't good, but oh. I don't remember doing that. I'll show you. I, what, you save I them? can't believe you're... No, texts just exist. <laughs> yeah, I, sa I press save on my text. What kind of phone do you have? No, I, I like delete them after a while. What are you saving it for? You delete texts? Yeah. Oh, I never do because all our friends die and then it's all you have left. <laughs> How many of you had? Die? I'm up, I kind of... I have a huge I, list. I'm I, 30. Keep... 30. Yeah. Get something funny out of that. That's what you do. I'm not good at that. I'm not good in the mom. All right. I do like you. And I just, I always feel like you're frustrated with me. I fucking love you. Look at my Sometimes posture right now. I'm like, I'm as far over into this chair as I can possibly be. I just feel like kind of came here to hang out and have a good time. And you just like, like that intro was just like, yeah. It was I just thought so, you'd like that. I fucking hate this guy. He's a douchebag, but he came down here. I mean, that's how I heard it. No means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no. All right, but no, stop it. What are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad. Stop it. No. Yeah, 
that, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me. So I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people. Right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you just sit me like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. So let's talk, uh, let's talk white women here, shall we? Let's talk white women. White women, you're amazing. Amazing your accomplishments over the last few years. I got to tell you, the way white women somehow hijack the woke movement, generals around the world should be analyzing this. Just to refresh your memory, the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color not getting opportunities, the at-bats that they deserved, finally making that happen. And it was about that for about eight seconds. And then somehow, white women swung their Gucci-booted feet over the fence of oppression and stuck themselves at the front of the line. I don't know how they did it. I've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women. My leg is so hard eh, with my SUV and my heated seats. You have no idea what it's like to be me. Trash and white guys, the nerve. Where's the camera? The nerve of you white women. Let me, I don't, listen, I don't want to speak ill of my bitches here, okay? I don't, but let's, let's go back in history here, okay? You guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around in the blood muddy, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with a black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, that's what you did. That's what you did. So why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to. <laughs> thing about show like say like stand-up comedy is it's one of the like if you go to prison it's hard to get a job but like you can walk out of prison and and do an open mic within the first week and people will put you on they won't give a shit dude they'd be like dude you should wear your fucking orange jumpsuit you killed somebody dude you should talk about that that'd, that'd be funny like they, they wouldn't <laughs> give a fuck <laughs> i thought you were time. laughing you were fucking yawning over here no, the mushrooms are the fucking mushrooms. killing me, man. You know, I knew it wasn't that. just weed. I was yeah. just like, there's no way I'm taking a hit off of that. There's mushrooms, something going on here. Mushrooms, baby. The shroom. I'm shrooming. <laughs> <laughs> you know how fucked up this is? He's shrooming, and he's wearing pants like he went riding a horse today. Uh, like side saddle or some shit. I'm just going to tell you how I discovered you. Uh, you know, I, I do all my whole career to you. <laughs> Yeah. I was no, 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 I no. was struggling until no, no, no. Bobby <laughs> Lee discovered me. Oh no, no, no. Not, not discover you in terms of like you d did it on your own, obviously. But no, in terms of my my awareness of you. Oh, can I tell you that story? Oh, no, no? I remember it was a big day in my career. <laughs> Bobby Lee is finally aware of me. <laughs> Am I on Bobby Lee's radar? See, this is what he's gonna. This do. is when things start to happen. <laughs> See, this, I'm not gonna allow this to happen. Reversal. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna allow this to happen. Reversal. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to plug away. You know what I mean? Listen, you can talk to him all you want. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> Did you guys see the picture of Donald watching his wife vote? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of trust in that relationship. <laughs> see if something great has happened to you. And yeah. In this case, yeah, the, the Red, Red Sox, Sox won, won the, the World, World Series. Series. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm not one of those guys. I don't I'm do a Mets that. fan anyway, so you could rub it in if you like. Nah, I don't. I don't do that. I don't, don't go to the stadium, posing stadium, wear the other teams. Oh, you don't stuff. You and had then no turn Red around stuff. and look at the crowd and do that. <laughs> Whenever I see that, I'm just like, that guy should get the <laughs> kicked out of him. <laughs> like, in a, in a perfect world, that happens. I used to wear stuff, the opposing team stuff, because I'm, you know, I moved away from Boston, but I just got sick of it. And it's not even being in the stands. It's when you go to the bathroom. That's the worst. Yeah, some guy knows. Yeah, you go out yeah. to the bathroom, they wait till you, you know, you're doing your thing, and then they push you in the bed, they take out their childhood on you, <laughs> and you got this bullseye on your head, and it's just like, why am I doing this? What am I, Steven Seagal? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight all these guys with my d out. You made, made that movie, right? I think you made a movie like that, so I'm just like, I am, I am a very courteous fan.
So if somebody said I had blood in my stool, they don't actually see blood. They see it's black. Right. So the higher up in your um, GI, wait, the who, blacker wait, wait, it is. Wait, what sort of background do you have? I was a nurse. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> Wow, wow. Because you really came off like, I was like... <laughs> No, this happens a lot on podcasts. All of a sudden, I'm listening to a comedian like telling me uh, how my liver works. And I'm just like, wait a minute, who the fuck are you? Okay, okay. I, I'm sorry. All right, yeah, yeah. so you're a nurse. All right. You know, like when feminists go like, oh, and they have like their missiles, these dick-shaped things, and blah blah blah. And I'm always thinking like, well, there is physics and aerodynamics and yeah. all that involved. Like, if you have it shaped like a twat, I don't think it's gonna make. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna make it to another country unless you frisbee it, right? <laughs> and even then, that gap's gonna fucking be a lot of drag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> While people are talking about eating fake pussies, that was before. I, just, I don't that want was to before. be responsible that for that before. shit. I didn't. But if the kid no, was in the no, fucking building, before. will you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Is that a Rolex? Yes, it is. I finally bought one. Twenty-five years in this business. Is it white gold or stainless? I don't know what it is. Is it heavy? No. Then it's stainless. Oh, is that what it is? I oh, just... thank you. Thank you for taking my watch down a notch. I finally felt successful. You see this? <laughs> you wouldn't say that if I had brown or black hair. I guarantee you. Blonde hair, you'd be over here giving me your watch. <laughs> Dude, the Me Too movement has killed the blowjob. My wife will not suck my dick on her knees ever again. It never will happen. because your stomach is pushing down her fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> her face is tilted back like this on her forehead. Just, uh, uh. Yeah, uh, it's like going down in an eight-foot pool down uh, to the bottom and not clearing your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for your wife. You know what I Because the older guys, Robert Kelly's and all that, they all call you Billy. Colin calls you Billy, but I fucking Bill. You I'm know just what I immediately mean? noticing that chain I don't know about the chain if it's if it's <laughs> yeah. thick enough to be yeah. that warm, that level of confidence. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, well, it's, well, it's more of a necklace. <laughs> When the chain's out, yeah, he has, he has on a fat chick ankle bracelet around yeah, his just, fucking neck. Around, most people are weird looking. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a hundred percent white dude. I'm a weird looking dude. You know what I mean? The the best dogs are mixed dogs. They're the chillest dogs. I'm telling you. You're right. You're absolutely <laughs> right on that. Yeah. Oh, that's why. The, that's why all those the, the, over there in England, the the the, the royal family. That's why they're all so weird looking. They're all banging in the same pool. They're like a bunch of Dalmatians that can That's talk. That's right. You're whatever incognito. You're an enigma. What, because I make a pie? No, you know what it is? You're not a good listener. You know, you've known me for 10 years. You have no idea who I am. It's all about comedy with you and moving up the ladder and pushing people up. <laughs> Now, is this, are you getting out of an existing house? And a, a, no, I'm going know? from a one-bedroom apartment, and I figured I'd finally go out and buy a damn house yeah. and yeah. not have to deal with, you know, some jerk living above me or below me, All right. you know? Yeah. Do my own little thing. Get sure. my little 12-gauge, get a bunch of cans of tuna, get ready for the apocalypse. That's what I want to do. You just ignore them. It's like three days. They flip out for three days. They try to bully you into an apology. Well, you can't ignore them when they're right in the audience and you're playing to them. You tell them to shut the fuck up. Yeah, believe me, it's a comedy you know show. <laughs> Trump's winning New Hampshire. <laughs> Hillary's winning uh, Virginia. Really? And there's a little kid here. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody decided it was a good idea. Uh, uh, somebody please take a photo of this Last Supper. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you end it. There we go, right there. <laughs> Thank it's you. all mine. There we go. Where's the camera? Right there. You see that? This is what the... A part of me dies every time I go into a store and I see something. They go, can we get a phone number? Watching somebody give them the phone number. Why would you do that? Yeah. I always give the same. I, mine is all area codes. They go, what's your phone number? I'm like, 323-818-2125. <laughs> We've never taken a break in the middle of, of a gas station. I know. I had all this momentum going. Now i got to start all over again. <laughs> go ahead. Go to the card. <laughs> see this? We won game one. Here comes the second of the double header. If I could work with anybody dead or alive, I'd want to work with. I don't. I don't want to work. I want to be home. The white ones are dollars. These are ten dollars. The green ones. These are twenty-five. The red ones, and these are hundred. The black ones. In a progressive move, the white chip is worth the least. <laughs> I fly a lot, and there's this whole new thing of generation of people that take their socks and their shoes off on the plane. You got to look at their smelly feet, and then they'll literally stand up and they will walk into a commercial airline bathroom. 
Yeah, use it and then walk and sit back down again. That's not right. Yeah, if I was a dictator, those people would be eliminated. You really are the whitest person I've ever seen in my life. Yes, <laughs> served me well. I've never worked for anything. <laughs> yeah, I was born on a yacht. It's just all been downhill. I don't even mean it in, I don't mean it in, in a, uh, a genetic way. I mean like... I do. You <laughs> I'm talking full-on white privilege. <laughs> It I seems... was stunned when I first heard about white privilege. I had no, no idea what it was. It was like, hey, everybody doesn't get to do this? <laughs> it seems as if the sun Pulling has never touched Pulling up job interviews right as I get out of the car. You're hired! <laughs> Go home, we'll see you tomorrow! This dude is knocking it out of the park. He's one of my favorites. Here is Bill Burr. Ha, ha, ha. Look Jimmy. At, look at you. How are you? Oh, it's I good. I love that you did the audience applaud. Applause for everybody. Yeah, there he is. Come on. Keep it going for him. It was really, uh, you know, you relate to adults differently, people that you knew forever. And I always hated when somebody who didn't have a kid goes, you don't get it, man. You don't get it till you have And I was like, fuck you. I get it. It's like a sure. having a dog, but it's more intense. <laughs> I love the racist white guy thing. A bunch of racist white guys. Uh, they came out of the forest and they were just going, Trump, Trump, Trump. It's like, where were all these racist white guys the last two elections when they could have voted against the black guy? They were fine. Oh, I don't mind the black guy, but this white lady, we got to stop her. She's going to take her four-wheeler. When I was wearing the whole fireman getup and they put the fake dirt in my face, I looked like I had been fighting fires for 20 years, right? However, the second I took off the costume and they cleaned off my face and I put on my regular clothes, I immediately just looked like some sad old queen that never found love, right? And as luck would have it, I was in New York City in June, which I quickly found out was Gay Pride Month. The whole month. And let me tell you something, the gay guys show up strong. It is wall to wall. The fucking island is almost tipping over. There's so many of them. And I'm sitting there like going, oh my God, 30 days of this shit. I'm walking around with this orange Freddie Mercury fucking dick broom on my face. I am going to be getting harassed. Up and down the street. I was an actor shape, man. I was fucking shredded. I got to tell you something, man. When I tell you 30 days of June, not one gay guy even fucking looked at me. Forget about even hit on me. I have never felt so old and undesirable in my life. Dude, I'm going to tell you something. It's this one thing. As a man, when you get so old that women don't look at you anymore, like, you know you're going to hit that age. You know that day's coming. But nobody tells you at some point you're going to get so old, not even a man wants to fuck you, right? Dude, that is a statement. When you get so old, some queen in his 60s is like, ah, keep it moving. I can do better than that. Jesus Christ. Get some fucking hair plugs or something. Get a spray tan. I can get some in his 40s. Go, keep, keep, keep going. Dude, it was like, I was like having like this fucking panic attack. I was thinking like, Oh my God, I waited too long to get married. I had kids too late, I'm gonna die soon. I was like literally like wrapping up my life, you know? So I'm walking down like Ninth Avenue, you know, putting a little swish in my fucking step, just trying to get something. I was desperate. Fuck you ladies, you've been there. You know how it is. You wanna, you wanna think you got one more in you, you know? So I'm trolling down the street. <laughs> I really wish that wasn't the truth. So I'm going down Ninth Avenue, and all of a sudden, I looked up, and about two blocks away, all of a sudden, I see this lesbian coming up the block, okay? Now, I know this is Boulder, Colorado, right? So you guys are all like, fucking, hey, man, you know? Like, how did you, like, know she was a lesbian, man? Like, that's not cool. You just looked at her, and you just knew she was a lesbian? You don't know her. How did you just, how did you just know somebody's a lesbian? Easy. The same way you do. The same way other lesbians do. It's not calculus. No, but I get it. I understand in 2021, you're not allowed to say you know what a lesbian looks like, right? Judging by your silence, yes, right? Yeah, you're not allowed, right? Well, it's funny, if some white kid came in here, like 20 years old, hair slicked back, collar popped, loafers, no socks, you'd be looking at him thinking like, all right, frat boy, date rapist, his dad's a judge, he's not going to jail. Yeah. Just killed five people in a drinking and driving accident. Already has a new Dodge Challenger on the way, right? Yeah, you're allowed to see that. That you can see, clear as day. Let's
touch me. Huh? I don't know. No, but that's how progressive you guys are, right? You don't have any idea, right? Like, let's play a game. I'll just name different people you see and see the slides that come into your head, right? Construction worker, sports fan, painter, skateboarder, lesbian. Right? It all goes blank. I, 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 is that a lesbian? Am I a... Uh? I mean, I have gay friends, but I've never noticed any sort of a through line. Listen, people, I'm not saying all lesbians look alike. I would never say some ignorant shit like that. However, I am saying, though, every once in a while, there's a fucking layup. Right? Flat top, wallet chain, fucking walking up the street. Right? But even then, even then, I'm not saying 100%. But gun to my head, I gotta go lesbian. Gotta go lesbian. Final answer, final answer, show me lesbian. Right? So, anyway, she's fucking, she's fucking walking up the street. I'm coming down, right? And it's clear to me <laughs> that if we keep walking the way we're walking, we're going to bump into each other. Now, I don't want to bump into a woman. I don't want to bump into anybody in New York. So I do the gentlemanly thing. I clock what's going on. So what I do is I just gradually shift over into my own lane. Now everything's fine, right? But then the weirdest thing happened. We walk like another 30 yards, and all of a sudden, she drifts back into my lane again. And I'm sitting there walking like, wow, that was that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Thought I see this up. All right, so I fucking dip into the, another lane again, right? Okay, I'm walking. We go another 30 yards. She comes back into my lane again. So now, like, I'm up against the curb. So now I'm, like, thinking, like, okay, how do I do the politically correct math here? Like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Am, am I supposed to, like, fucking, am I supposed to step off into the bike lane? Now some, some young kid on his electric bicycle come by, 40 miles an hour, run me over, I go down to the pavement, knees and elbows, and for the rest of my life, every time it rains, I gotta think about this lesbian that walked me off the fucking block? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Am, am I supposed to give up the whole sidewalk? Like, oh, 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 you're gayness, right? Or, do I stiffen up my shoulder and protect my leg, right? I'm not proud of this, but I chose the latter, all right? I was like, look, I'm 53, I moved twice, I have an AARP card, I'm the fucking victim here. So, so I stiffen up the shoulder, and then immediately I'm thinking like, okay, this is gonna get crazy. I have never done this with a female before, this is in public, people are gonna see this shit, what's gonna happen, right? But I'm not gonna lie to you, she started closing in, she was moving, so I like leaned in, like I really, Got my legs underneath me because she was built like a janitor and I was not going to get spun around. I wasn't getting spun around not having that on the fucking logbook, right? So I leaned into this shit and at the last second she turned her shoulder and we, we just missed shoulders but our forearms still slapped together with significant enough force that it warranted a turnaround. Okay? Now I know most of you guys drive so I will break down pedestrian etiquette really quickly in New York City. This is the deal. If you're walking down the street in New York, right, you're walking, you're walking, and if you just sort of brush sleeves with somebody, you don't have to stop. You can just look over your shoulder, hey, sorry, man, my bad, have a nice day, right? Then this is the next level. Moves up a little bit. You're walking down the street, you actually bump into somebody, you actually have to turn around, sorry, didn't see you, little dojo bow, my bad, whatever you have to do, my sensei, to, to keep it from escalating. 